Krishnamurti was a physician turned pediatrician who established the Department of Pediatrics at Garman Rajaji Hospital, Madurai, then the Erskine Hospital. He nurtured it carefully into an institute of pediatrics as it is today, and one of our judges is presently the director of the same. Through innovative community nutrition programs, along with Professor Venkataswamy, an ophthalmologist, he was responsible for wiping out vitamin A deficiency blindness and severe malnutrition in children. He moved over to Chennai as the director and superintendent of ICH and HC to succeed Professor Dr. V. Balagopala Raju. He established the first nutrition rehabilit rehabilitation center at Institute of Child Health and guided the ICDS project as a consultant. He started the first ever society for CME for pediatricians. He has served as the president IAP, IAP Tamil Nadu State Chapter and EB member of Central IAP and has contributed a lot for the betterment of child health. In his memory, the IAP Tamil Nadu State Chapter has organized this award, which is being conducted during the annual conferences every year. One award for the best paper in social pediatrics is given during the annual conference of IAP TNSC. Each presenter will be given 10 minutes for presentation and will have five minutes for discussion. Kindly note that the questions are only from the judges and it will be answered by the presenter only. Prior to having this session here, we have received many papers. This time it was an overwhelming response from the postgraduates, thanks to the efforts of our office bearers. And uh, they had submitted papers for this KAK award. So these papers were scrutinized by a panel of three judges. They had been adjudged for the originality, applicability and reproducibility, the design and methods, statistical analysis, observations and tables, discussion and message to the community. And based on that, three of the presenters today have been selected after a very tough competition. Today, our judges will judge these three papers based on relevance of the study, methods involved, statistical analysis, validity of the conclusion, timing of the presentation, the presentation per se, the slides and discussion and answer to the questions. So I now request the first presenter, Dr. N. Nandini to present her study on the prevalence of stress, anxiety and depression among school going adolescents following COVID pandemic. Please give us some time to find out the PPT. It is, uh... Can I call upon the next presenter, Dr. K. Manoj, to present her study on the mental health status of adolescents residing in tribal residential schools of Tamil Nadu. Your timing starts now. Uh, excuse me. Huh? Good. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is a study on mental health status of adolescents in residing in tribal residential schools in Tamil Nadu. Uh, study done by authors from Salem Medical College. Uh, mental health of adolescents are often neglected and are grossly underreported. 
Adolescence is a period of stress and early detection and treatment of psychological problems in adolescence is very important. According to National Mental Health Survey of 2016, the prevalence of mental health disorders in Indian adolescents found to be 7.3%. Tribal communities in India are often neglected and are prone to several diseases. To give an impetus to the welfare of tribal school children, Government of India started Ekalavya Model Residential Schools, EMRS, in the year of 1997 under the Ministry of Tribal Welfare. EMRS was named after Egalaivan. He is a character in Mahabharatam who was a jungle prince and mastered archery by worshipping Dronacharya, as we can see in this picture. EMRS aims to impart quality education as well as extracurricular activities and also comprehensive physical, mental, social relevant development of the tribal students. There are only very few studies available to describe the mental health status of adolescents in India. Hence, we aim to assess the mental health status of adolescent boys and girls in two tribal residential schools in and near our district of Salem. It's a cross-sectional descriptive study comprising of two tribal residential schools. All permissions were obtained for conducting the study. This is the first school we visited, which was the first started EMRS school for boys in Tamil Nadu, which is located in Veli Malay in Kalrai Nils. This is the second school we visited, which is EMRS school for girls located in Bethnaikam Palayam in the foothills of Kalrai Nils. A sample size was calculated using this formula with a minimum sample size of 104 was obtained. All the adolescent boys and girls who are present on the day of the study were included in the study. The study tool which was used is Tamil version of strength and difficulty questionnaire. This is a widely used study tool. It is standardly used in several Western countries to evaluate the mental health problem in the school going children. This SDQ is much shorter and easier to use and it is available in all Indian languages. This is the Tamil version of strength and difficulty questionnaire. We went as a team, five authors, one child psychologist, one special educator and a social worker were involved. A short briefing was given by one of the authors and adequate time was given for them to complete the questionnaire. This is me explaining the questionnaire to the children as well as general examination was done on that day. Similarly, it was done in girls school and their questions were collected and it was evaluated. This strength and difficulty questionnaire comprises of two types of scores. The first score is a subscale difficulty score that has five subscales for emotional related problems the questions asked regarding whether the child is having fear, worry or nervous all the time. For hyperactivity problem, the questions asked regarding whether the child is restless, fidgety or getting easily distracted. For peer relationship problem, the questions asked regarding whether the child is playing alone or having no good friends. For conduct problem, the questions asked regarding whether the child is cheating, stealing or fighting. Finally, the pro-social behavior assess the strength of the adolescents in which the questions asked whether the child is considerate or being helpful or sharing with other children. The second score is the total difficulty score, which is the sum of the first four subscales, which I mentioned previously. This total difficulty score assess the overall mental health status in the individual. To summarize SDQ for you, subscale difficulty score has five subscales. One is the emotional, second is conduct, third is peer, fourth is hyperactivity, and finally pro-social. The total difficulty score is the sum of the first four, which is highlighted in blue, which assess the overall mental health status of the adolescents. The data was analyzed using SPS version 24. Moving on to results, a total of 141 students were included in the study. Girls outnumbered boys with a mean age of study population in 17.1 years. All the respondents belong to Malayali tribe. None of them come from primitive tribal group. In this study, 14% of the study population were found to have abnormal mental health status, that is 20 students, which was calculated using the total difficulty score. Uh, moving on to subscale difficulty scores, uh, in first problem is emotional problem. In that 21% of the study population were found to have emotional problems like worrying, nervousness, fear. 11% of the study population were found to have conduct problem like fighting, stealing, cheating. 11% of the study population were found to have hyperactivity problem like uh, uh, let, I mean, um, restlessness. 6% of the study population were found to have peer problems like having no good friends or uh, rather, being, rather staying alone. 
uh, find, finally come to pro social behavior which assess the strength of the individual in which only one percentage of study population are found to be abnormal uh, we question the adolescents whether all these difficulties impact their day to day life like learning leisure friendship and home activities we 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 got 38% of the individuals uh, saying they were severely impacted by these difficulties moving on to gender variation uh, the prevalence of mental health is more in boys when compared to girls but it was statistically insignificant with a p value of 0.234 moving on to gender variation in subscale abnormalities boys were found to have more problem mental health problem when compared to girls which on on statistical analysis we could we could come to conclusion that conduct problem and hyperactivity problem were more in boys than in girls it was statistically significant with a p value of 0.004 and 0.019 respectively moving on to impact of difficulties on the life of adolescents boys were found to have more difficulties when compared to girls boys the stat- there was statistical significance with a p value of 0.001 Um, all the 20 adolescents who were found to have abnormal mental health problem were referred to the psychiatric department in salem and they are also registered in our deic and various treatment modalities were given based on their needs moving on to discussion uh, the prevalence of abnormal mental health problem in emrs school was found to be 14% which was low when compared to several studies which was conducted in india which ranges between 15 to 37% this wide variation in prevalence among various studies are due to diverse study population the problems in subscale comparison with several other studies in india we could we could see that emotional problems are more common when compared to all the other problems which was similar to one another study conducted by keho in rural population on the other hand uh, we we could un- we could analyze conduct problems are more common when compared to all the other studies Uh, the interesting part in this study is that the pro social behavior problem were low which was similar to one another study conducted by rf ali et al in tribal boys in jharkhand the peer and pro social behavior problems are lower in the present study this is in contrast to all the other studies because tribal adolescents in the residential schools were found to be more socializing they spend more time with their children they play for a longer time with other children whereas the children from urban population spend majority of time in front of television and in front of gadgets uh, stat- that is a statistically significant higher prevalence of contact and hyperactivity problem seen in boys than in girls statistical analysis and also help my co-authors for drafting the study ma'am okay okay good yeah very very well done and uh, very good study okay uh, what made you do the study um uh, <clears throat> there are uh, only very few studies in india to uh, uh, to establish about mental health problems in tribal tribal school children ma'am so uh, i wanted to do the study uh, to Uh, to emphasize that uh, tribal school children are having better uh, mental health problems when compared to urban school children so fine did covid affect uh, i mean did you look at covid affecting these children uh, yes ma'am uh, act- uh, we planned of uh, t- getting a bigger number among students but because of covid only 12th was functioning ma'am that too for two months um, that too we were given only very few time to uh, spend with the children so it was very it was uh, difficult to collect more samples ma'am okay uh, uh, congratulations doctor wonderful study thank you the, the first uh, uh, introduction you told 7.3% is the prevalence 
Yes, sir. But all the Indian studies show 14% and more than 14%. Somebody showed 37%. What is it? Uh, sir, uh, uh, in the, in the, in the, uh, I mean the study which was taken in other uh, people, uh, they, uh, they didn't take a big population, sir. It was like uh, restricted to 100 to 200 students. So that's the reason uh, the prevalence of mental health is more among those children. Sir. Uh, this uh, uh, protocol you have used, how, who was uh, behind the translating it? Is that uh, tra Tamil translation standardized or what? Sir, uh, th that is, uh, the, the questionnaire is already translated in all the languages in uh, India, sir, which can be downloaded from internet. Okay. Now, there, I, I don't understand this. Uh, Pro-social behavior. If it is good, it is normal. Uh, sir, That's all. Why, do, why are you bringing it as abnormal? Pro-social. Uh, no, sir. Uh, in, uh, in the questionnaire, we can see negative scoring for this pro-social behavior, sir. If the child is not considerate with other people, we will give zero for that child. Uh, if the child is considerate, sorry, if the child is not considerate with other people, give two for that child. If the child is considerate with others and shares others, we will give zero for that child. It's a negative scoring, sir, the pro-social scoring. Negative? Yes. I don't know, sir. And... Uh... Yet in your confession, you told only class 12 was uh, taken up. So class 12 already, they will have a lot of pressure. Yes. So the incidence, what you were measured, may be a little higher because of that. Definitely it will be higher. Not uh, definitely it will be higher. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Manoj. I now request the next presenter, Dr. N. Nandini for her study on prevalence of stress, anxiety, and depression among school going adolescents following COVID pandemic. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Nandini, president of pediatrics from Kilpak Medical College, and I'm here to present my study on the prevalence of stress, anxiety, and depression among school going adolescents following the COVID pandemic. An outbreak of the novel coronavirus disease, COVID-19, has spread from Wuhan, China in December 2019, and it has become a pandemic affecting almost every continent. So as a response to the pandemic, lockdown was imposed and the schools were closed. And in our state, the schools were closed from 23rd March 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown has made people suffer from physical as well as mental health issues, and students are among the worst hit groups. So, uh, primary objective of our study was to estimate the prevalence of stress, anxiety, and depression among the school-going adolescents following this COVID pandemic. And our secondary objective was to determine whether there was any relationship between the socio-demographic variables and stress, anxiety, and depression. So, uh, we conducted a cross-sectional study in the high schools and the higher secondary schools belonging to the Chennai Corporation West Zone from October 2021 to November 2021. And we included children of age group 14 to 17 years studying in the high schools and the higher secondary schools belonging to the Chennai Corporation West Zone. So, the healthy boys and girls studying high school and higher secondary schools in the uh, grades 9 to 12 were included. And the children who didn't turn up with the signed parental consental forms were excluded from the study. Sample size was calculated using uh, uh, based on the study done by Bijoy Chetri et al., which reported a 25% prevalence of stress among the students with an estimated error of 5%, an alpha error of 5%. And the minimal sample size was calculated using this formula, and it was 289. So we plan to include 300 students in our study. Our sampling strategy was to cover the schools covered under this DIC of the institution under RBSK program and it was considered and they came under three corporation zones. So we plan to recruit 25 students from each class of grade 9, 10, 11 and 12 amounting to 100 students from each school. So as the sample size we recorded was 300, we visited three schools, one from each zone selected by simple random sampling from the list of schools we had to include the record number.
So we begin the study with uh, getting our permission from our institutional ethics committee, and we approached the chief educational officer, Chennai Corporation. The, then we approached the headmaster and the headmistress of the schools we selected by simple random technique. So for, uh, after getting permission from the headmaster and the headmistress, we approached the students. After, after the, once the classes get over, we uh, uh, gathered the students in a classroom and we briefed about the study and the parental consent forms were distributed to them. Those students who came up with the signed parental consent forms were included in the study after getting returned assent from the same children. So this is our uh, demographic questionnaire containing the social demographic details of age, gender, parent education, occupation, income, and the socioeconomic status as per Kupuswami scale, the number of the siblings the children had, the mode of access to education during the lockdown, their mode of recreation during the lockdown, and about the status of the peer group in their neighborhood. The instrument we used to uh, calculate the prevalence of stress, anxiety, and depression was DAS 21 scale. It is a self-reported scale. It assesses the state of mind in the past one week. This scale consists of 21 questions. Out of that, seven questions each to measure the states of stress, anxiety, and depression. So each question has responses grading from zero to three, depending upon uh, whether zero stands, whether it doesn't apply uh, to the student at all. One means it has applied to some degree, two means it has applied to the student to a considerable degree, and three means most of the time the children had the same feelings. So from zero to three, the children can give their response. So the individual response scores were submitted and the score assigned for each subscale of stress, anxiety, and depression. This table shows the summated scores. So the summated score of uh, stress, anxiety, and depression has to be multiplied by two to calculate the final score. This is because the, the DAS 21 scale is an abridged version of DAS 42, which is the parent scale of this DAS 21 scale. So once the scores are summated and finalized, the children will be categorized into normal, mild, moderate, severe, or extremely severe categories of stress, anxiety, and depression. Data was entered in Microsoft Excel and analyzed using SPSS statistical software version 23.0. The numerical variables were summated as mean and standard deviation and categorical variables as proportion. The outcome variable was expressed in proportion with 95% confidence interval. The relation between the outcome variable and the sociodemographic variable was determined by chi square test and p-value less than 0.05 was considered significant. Moving on to results. So our study included 300 students with a mean age of 15.76 years, 50.7% 50 of the children were males, 15.9% of the fathers were illiterates, and out of them, 6% of the fathers were unemployed. Irrespective of this COVID situation, only 6% of the fathers were unemployed, this is notable, and 14.7% uh, of the mothers were illiterates, 54% of the mothers were employed, 87.4% belong to lower socioeconomic scale. Majority of the students belong to lower socioeconomic status. 5.3% of the students did not have any sibling and 22% students did not have any peer group in their neighborhood. So uh, uh, the, regarding the access to education during the lockdown, 75.3% uh, of the children had an access to education only through mobile phones and 15.7% of the children had access through television. Only 9% of the students did not have any access to education during this lockdown. The main recreation of the children was, 33% uh, uh, of the children had a recreation through outdoor play, whereas 21% of children uh, had uh, their recreation through uh, watching television. 28% of the children had their main mode of recreation through uh, playing mobile games and 18% of the children had uh, their uh, mode of recreation as uh, reading books. 50% of the children has got screen dependence, whereas the other 50% of the children had good recreational activities. Regarding the primary outcome, the prevalence of stress was 30.3% with confidence interval of 25.18 to 35.88. Prevalence of anxiety was 47.3% and depression was 56.7% with the confidence interval as shown. This graph shows the uh, prevalence of various grades of severity of anxiety, stress, and depression. Around 70% of the children were free from stress. 
52.7 percentage of the children were free from anxiety and 43.5 percentage of the children were free from depression on the other hand around 10 percentage of the children uh, suffered from severe to extremely severe stress 30 percentage of the children suffered from severe to extremely severe categories of uh, anxiety and that around 20 percentage of the children suffered from severe to extremely severe categories of depression this category this uh, uh, severe to extremely severe categories of stress, anxiety, and depression, they need to be noted because these children are uh, more prone to develop mental health issues if they are not, if they are being unnoticed. So this, uh, these children are those who uh, need intervention so that we can prevent mental health issues in these children. So the secondary outcome of our study was to compare the socioeconomic and demographic uh, variables with stress, anxiety, and depression. Uh, here um, in this table, the demographic among the demographic variables, the maternal illiter illiteracy has got a significant association with stress, with p-value of 0 0.022. And uh, this comparison of variables with anxiety, uh, none of the variable has got any significant association with anxiety. And uh, this uh, table of uh, comparing the demographic variables with depression, again, maternal illiteracy has got a significant association with depress depression. This uh, maternal illiteracy has got a significant association with stress as well as depression. This shows that if uh, better, um, with met better maternal literacy rates, the mothers could adopt better parenting techniques and thus mental health issues in children could be solved. So we wanted to compare our studies with the similar studies done in the post-COVID era. Uh, in the Chinese study, as well as the Brazil study, showed significantly higher amount of stress, anxiety, and depression compared to our study. Whereas another study done in our neighbor, in neighboring country, Bangladesh, has shown almost similar amount of stress, anxiety, and depression compared to our study. The higher uh, prevalence of stress, anxiety, and depression in China, because it is being the epic center of the pandemic, no wonder it has higher amount of stress, anxiety, and depression. We want to compare our study to the study done in the pre-COVID era and uh, in our country to the, know the baseline prevalence of uh, stress, anxiety, and depression. Uh, among the studies done in Mani uh, Manipur has uh, shown lesser amount of stress, anxiety, and depression. Uh, and in metropolitan city like Delhi has shown a higher amount of stress, anxiety and depression. And in a study done in Tamil Nadu in the year 2018 has shown lesser amount of stress and a higher amount of anxiety and depression. So we want to, uh, this is ironically lesser when compared to the post-COVID era. So we wanted to know the reasons for relatively lesser amount of stress in the post-COVID period. So it could be due to the lesser pressure to perform due to the lack of physical classes and lesser academic stress contributed by easier examination methods where prior the examination methods were very strict and evaluation were very strict and lesser peer group pressure and the children had more time for recreational activities and they had to, uh, more time to spend with their family uh, due to this lockdown. The main limitation of our study is the data on mental health status of these children prior to the onset of pandemic is not available for comparison. This is offset by the fact that there is enough published literature on this from the same region with which it can be compared. So and to conclude, stress, anxiety and depression are encountered in sizable number of uh, children in the high schools and the higher secondary schools in the post-COVID era, but not in excess of that reported prior to the onset of pandemic. Maternal illiteracy is a risk factor for stress and depression in children. Since one in three children have severe mental health issues, it is advisable to employ counselors in the schools who can offer counseling to children on a regular basis, which will go a long way in improving their mental health. And improving female literacy will contribute to the betterment of community, as it is even taken as a key factor in assessing the development of the country. Empowering the female literacy will help in resolving the mental health issues in the children due to better parenting techniques. Thank you. I thank my professor, Dr. Sridevi ma'am, for the guidance and the support. So, um... Again, a study, it's a need of the hour. Uh, you mentioned that there was no difference between COVID, uh, pre-COVID and the COVID in the rates of depression. That's what you mentioned. Did you do a comparative um, study? Mama, uh, the, in the pre-COVID era, the study was done in Tamil Nadu, ma'am. 
study was done in, in tamil nadu pre covid era the study was done ma'am okay you you did not do anything to compare before and after uh, we didn't do a pre covid study ma'am okay with the similar studies we compared no random sampling you have done okay good uh, when when was it done after reopening of school or you went to the uh, uh, houses and uh, surveyed no, sir, after do? reopening of the schools sir after reopening of the schools only uh, it is a controversial I, i do not know how far it's a less stress in children during covid uh, less psychological problems to, uh, in uh, children during covid i do not know how far uh, can take it uh, because they will be always be home bound they cannot go outside and all but they are in better mental health that's what you want to say i don't know uh, so the academic my... stress was less due to uh, easy evaluation methods and they were given uh... school is a stress okay academic stress through uh, this uh, online classes and all are uh, continue to be there and it is it was actually more touch that's what i honestly feel then a school okay and uh, you said uh, maternal literacy um, it's also once again a controversial uh, area educated mothers are the one which are more demanding and uh, they touch other children like anything and uh, as far as my knowledge goes those children are the one really who have got so many psychological and psychosomatic problems than a mother a village mother who is uneducated coming bringing the child to us that's my comment it was a good study doctor and you have done you have taken schools under dic centers under rpsc national program you have included das 21 is a self reported scale am i right yes ma'am yeah it's a self reported scale done once yes ma'am by the i mean by the students themselves they do a reporting of their own behavior only once to you yes ma'am so yesterday's even on that particular day i mean you said one week even it might affect the child psychology but assessment of a child only once that to by the child by himself and we are not doing any physical i mean we are not assessing the child we are not doing they are assessing and giving you the reports sir how far we can rely on their own statements that uh, what do you feel mama i think that and since being done only once today i might be angry tomorrow i will be in an entirely different mood so is it enough you feel, do you feel it's enough mama since they are in a and grade. can it be authentic do you feel um i think they belong to grade have, 9 to 12 so okay uh, uh, maybe that has boosted your 50 more your uh, statistics are alarming no really uh, the we didn't expect and any whenever the whenever the school opens children become a little stressed that is there and this once one time as by the candidate by themselves i feel that may not be a valid assessment one thing and another one is uh, uh, as balashankar sir said educated mothers are, uh, are uh, they produce more stress or illiterate mothers produce more stress according to your study it um, is illiterate mothers um, um, uh, probable uh, what do you feel is the probable reason for that um, uh, due to online classes students and there are so many factors that alone is a significant factor in your study yes for the stress we got um, it as uh, they, uh, uh, i mean uh, even an un- unemployed father is not producing stress but uh, educate uneducated mother is producing more stress for the child ma'am due to online classes children find difficulty in understanding their lessons ma'am so with uh, educated mothers they could help them in uh, learning the lessons they are in standard uh, you have taken 9 10 11 10 12 yeah. Nine yes, and ten. Even as a doctor, you think a mother can help that uh, the, those mathematical problems? Maybe we can help as a doctor in biological problems. But, uh, they could at least support okay. when compared that, to that. I mean, that is your observation. That is your yes, observation. That we can't question, but it's an observation. Okay, doc. Thank you. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Nandini. Um, the next presenter is Dr. Tharini. Can grandmothers be guardian angels in nurturing kangaroo mother care in their homes? A comparative study of knowledge about KMC among the mothers and grandmothers. Good evening, all. 
can grandmothers be god in angels in nurturing kangaroo mother care in their homes It's a comparative study of knowledge about KMC among the mother and grandmother diets. It was conducted at GM KMC at Salem. In our neonatal follow-up clinic, we found that even well-motivated mothers who are providing efficient KMC during their stay in the hospital were not able to continue it in their homes. And most of them asserted that grandmothers were not supporting it. Hence, we wanted to quantitatively assess and document the level of knowledge about KMC in the grandmothers and which will help in formulating a formal educative tools for them. Coming to introduction, KMC was first initiated at 1978, Bogota, Colombia, and in 2003, WHO formally endorsed the KMC, and at 1994, India first initiated KMC. Kangaroo mother care is a simple method of caring for low birth weight babies for a better neurodevelopmental outcome because KMC stimulates all the five senses of the neonates like touch, hearing, taste, vision, and olfaction and provides better neurodevelopmental outcome for low birth weight babies. And it also promotes sleep in the baby so that it will improve the neuronal plasticity of the newborn. Though the advantages of KMC are well known, there is lack of interest and resistance to its implementation at various levels in the healthcare system. Why grandmothers? Why not other family members? Because grandmothers play a key role in child rearing in Indian society, and they have traditionally significant influence on the decisions related to child health. Our aim of the study is to estimate the level of knowledge about KMC in the grandmothers and to compare it with that of the mothers. Coming to materials and methods, it's a comparative study of knowledge about KMC between the mothers, who is considered as a group one, and grandmothers, who is considered as a group two. The sample size was calculated by using this formula, and the minimum sample size calculated was 303. We have included all the mother and grandmother diets of the graduated babies who is attending the follow-up clinic. And we have excluded the grandmothers who are not accessible for the interview. We used to give counseling to the mother and their family members during their stay in the hospital and during our pre-discharge counseling session. We have used a pre-validated questionnaire, which was used by Shruti Bajaj et al., which contains 15 questions to assess the knowledge about KMC in the mothers. This is a Tamil version of the questionnaire, which we have used in our study to the mother as well as the grandmothers. For the predefined answers, scores were given as zero for no knowledge, one for some knowledge, and two for the adequate knowledge. To avoid interviewers bias, the questionnaire was administered myself alone to the, all the participants. The statistical analysis was done by using SPSS version 24. Coming to the results, First, we see the socio-demographic profile of the mothers. About 42% of the mothers were between 21 to 24 years of age group, and 71% of the mothers have completed up to higher secondary schooling. And 49% belong to upper socioeconomic class and none from lower socioeconomic class, according to modified PG Prasad scale, as it is applicable for both urban and rural population. Coming to socio-demographic profile of the grandmothers, about 62% of the grandmothers were above 50 years of age, and about 43% of the grandmothers were uneducated, and none of the grandmothers have completed above higher secondary schooling. Moving on to comparison of knowledge levels. We have used 15 questions, which was divided into three parts. Each part contains five questions, and let's see the first part. First part is related to knowledge about KMC. The first question is, what is KMC? For this, 5% of the grandmothers had adequate knowledge. Second question, which baby needs KMC? For this, 5% of the grandmothers had adequate knowledge. Who are all the mothers who can practice KMC? For this, none of the grandmothers had adequate knowledge. When is KMC instituted? For this question, the answer expected to be, when the baby and mother clinically stable enough to provide KMC, the KMC should be initiated. If they have given two answer, the score of two provided. If they have given only one answer, the score of one provided. If they didn't answer at all, the score of zero has been provided. 
For this, none of the grandmothers had adequate knowledge, and in mothers also, lesser percentage of them had adequate knowledge. And final question is, where is KMC initiated? For this, 15 percentage of the grandmothers had adequate knowledge. In this first part, that is regarding knowledge about KMC, grandmothers had significantly lower knowledge than the mothers with a p-value of less than 0 0.001. Coming to second part, which is regarding techniques of KMC. And the first question is, can you continue KMC at home? For this, 8% of the grandmothers had adequate knowledge. Who else can provide KMC? For this, 5% of the grandmothers had adequate knowledge. Next question is, what is normal position of the baby during KMC? What should be the mother's posture while providing KMC? And how to give KMC where the mother is sleeping and resting? For the last three questions, none of the grandmothers had adequate knowledge and in mothers also, lesser percentage of them had adequate knowledge. In the second part also, grandmothers had significantly lower knowledge than the mothers with a p-value of less than 0 0.001. Coming to final part, which is regarding advantages of KMC. The first question is, what should be the baby's clothing? For this, 10% of the grandmothers had adequate knowledge. What is the minimum duration of KMC per sitting? For, for this, only 5% of the grandmother had adequate knowledge. When should be KMC discontinued? For this, 10% of the grandmothers had adequate knowledge. Next question is, what are the advantages of KMC? For this, the answer expected to be, it prevents hypothermia, it promotes breastfeeding, and it will be helpful for the baby to improve their weight. If they have given more than two answers, the score of two has been provided. If they have given only one answer, the score of one provided. If they didn't answer at all, the score of zero provided. For this question, none of the grandmother had adequate knowledge. And in mothers also, lesser percentage of them had adequate knowledge. And the last most question is, what is the indicator that the baby is well during KMC? For this, only 5% of the grandmothers had adequate knowledge. In this part also, grandmothers had significantly lower knowledge than the mothers with a p-value of less than 0 0.001. Coming to sum up of the overall knowledge scores between the mother and grandmothers, the mother's median knowledge scores is about 83.33%. And the grandmother's median knowledge scores is about 26.66%. The grandmothers had about only one third of knowledge about KMC than that of the mothers. On comparison of mean knowledge scores of the mothers with their age, educational grade, and socioeconomic status was not statistically significant with a p-value of 0 0.2, 0 0.6, and 0.73 respectively. Similarly, in grandmothers also, comparison of median knowledge scores, of scores with their age and educational grade was not statistically significant with the p-value of 0.3 and 0.22 respectively. Moving on to discussion, in the Indian society, the grandmothers play an important role in child rearing and they also provide financial support to the parents. There are no studies to evaluate the level of knowledge about KMC in the grandmothers. A systematic review showed that lack of social support as an important barrier for KMC. In few studies, mothers felt that they were not supported in their homes for fostering KMC. The median knowledge scores of the grandmothers were significantly lower than the mothers in this study. A study by Roder et al observed that the family members had significantly lower knowledge about KMC. Cultural and educational differences usually have a significant impact on the level of knowledge about KMC in the mothers in many other studies. But in our study, no such impact was observed. An Indian mother has to balance newborn care and domestic work in their homes. But in countries where gender roles were equal, this was not an important barrier to KMC. But in countries like India, where gender inequality still exists, the support of the grandmothers who are often the decision makers in child rearing will be an important determinant for fostering home KMC. Coming to conclusion and recommendations. This study had demonstrated that the grandmothers have about only one third knowledge about KMC than that of the mothers. The existing educational tools of the KMC do not provide adequate knowledge and motivation to the grandmothers. Hence, the separate educational aids for the grandmothers are to be developed 
and taking into consideration their educational background and age. The provision of post-discharge home KMC is a missing link in the better neurodevelopmental outcome of low birth weight neonates. For providing the home KMC, the home milieu should be made favorable for it by empowering the grandmothers with adequate knowledge about it. The empowered grandmother will be a guardian angel in fostering KMC and nurture better neurodevelopmental outcome for their grandchildren. These are all my references. I thank our HOD sir and our chief sir, Dr. Kumaravel sir. Thank you, Nanda. Thank you, Doctor, for thank that you, innovative study. Yes, sir. Um, my question was, uh, you did it in the mother diet, what you call yes, uh, mother and grandmother diet. Yes, sir. You did it in that diet, whom you have given counseling? Yes, sir. For the mother and grandmother, we have given counseling. You called both of them and both of them were counseled equally? Yes, sir. Uh, in uh, mother, we have we used to counsel in before initiating KMC, sir. Before initiating KMC. You as well as... counsel the mother. Did you counsel the grandmother? That's what I Yes, asked. sir. We have counseled grandmothers also in our pre-discharge counseling sessions, sir. So in spite of that, the uh, uh, of... knowledge is very poor. Yes, sir. Okay, I don't have anything else to add. I think uh, just testing the theoretical knowledge alone is not sufficient. Mothers are definitely more educated and they can even Google and tell you the answers. How will anyone know when was KNC initiated and who initiated KNC? That is not the, I mean, actual thing is how the method was done. You probably you should have looked into the method by which the mothers did and method by which the grandmothers yeah. did and not looking at the knowledge of so, the I mean, theory behind KMC, no one is interested. Yes. You gave training to both of them. Yes, okay. ma'am. It was the same type of training you gave to them. Am yes, right? ma'am. Ah, yeah. For the both. See, mother and grandmother, are they two comparable groups uh, Groups by the age-wise, uh, their knowledge-wise? their education wise, their economical uh, strength wise, are they comparable groups? Ma the actually, groups are different. Yes, ma'am. So should you modify your type of tra uh, type of training or you should give the same type of training and compare both the groups? We have modified and... Uh, so you said you gave the same type of training. Now you are telling you have modified the training. No, ma'am. Previously, we used to give same type of training, ma'am. After our study, we came to know... Oh, yeah, after your study, you are planning to do that. Yes, ma'am. Before your study, you should have done that. No, because yes, they are not two comparable groups. How can you come? How can you give the same type of uh, training to two different groups and assess the results? I think that's a uh, uh, it right. It's a flaw of the study. It's not even a limitation. It's a flaw of the study. And again, the questions, these twelve questions which you have asked, you have fifteen trained questions, them, 15 yes, questions which you have trained them. They were framed by. It's a pre-validated questionnaire, ma'am. Pre-validated question. Yes, okay, Bogoto KMC was started in Bogoto. That train, imparting that training to the mother or grandmother, how is it going to help the child? Because uh, in uh, our... It was Indian... validated and the study was, that validation and study was done in Colombia probably. This, which, this study, ma'am? You said the study was, the score that, uh, it was uh, the scoring system. That pre the study was, uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. This pre-validated uh, uh, question was uh, used in a study which was done by Shruti Bajaj et al, ma'am. Shruti From Bajaj. Which place, which place, sir, madam? In India only, ma'am. In? India, ma'am. In India. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. the opportunity it was an excellent presentation by all three postgraduates and we, re we really congratulate all three of you have done extremely well and we'll be announcing the results shortly thank you very much i thank my co-judges dr janani shankar and dr bala shankar uh, we have come to the same sort of conclusion so we are very happy about it thank you thank you we thank the judges for uh, judging this most important award of iap tnsc i request our office bearers president dr Mohammed Ismail, IAP, Tamil Nadu State Chapter, and our Secretary, Dr. Rajendran, to hand over the Certificate of Honor to the judges.
Professor Dr. S. Balashankar. Dr. S. Janani Shankar. And Professor Lakshmi Vedas.